Vending machines are actually insane these days. When I went to Japan in 2019, I was fascinated by their vending machine culture. In Japan, you can find anything from live growing lettuce, to buying a whole new outfit, or to even picking up a cheeky beverage at 20 to 8 in the morning, all from vending machines. So when I got the opportunity to manage Pokemon vending machines, I jumped at it. It's now been almost a year since getting the two machines. So I thought let's make a video on the day in the life of running Pokemon card vending machines. At the start of the day in true rise and grind fashion, I do the standard death scroll on every social media platform. Occasionally, I'll take a break to do some business emails, and I'll also look around for stock acquisition opportunities on Facebook Marketplace and in Pokemon TCG groups. And then it's time to travel all the way into the office. With the office looking as tidy as usual, we sit down and we check out our MoMA app. Now, MoMA is a fantastic piece of software that allows us to check all of our vending machine stock levels, product lines, and as well as change any prices if we need to on the fly. Being able to have this access from anywhere in the world is fantastic, and it relieves a lot of stress in case something goes wrong with the machines, and you can't get there immediately to troubleshoot the problem. All right. If we check our moment app, we can see that we do need to do a couple of different restocks. So today we're going to restock up our Karini V Heroes. We also need to restock our Unlisted Leaf Mystery Packs, our own Poke Lotto Graded Card Mystery Boxes. Pretty much need to do a restock on all of our Japanese sets, but the main ones we're going to do are Ruler of the Black Flame, Future Flash, and Ancient Raw. Uh, Pokemon 151 also needs a restock today. Evolving Skies 2, as well as a whole heap of our bold bundles are also missing from our machine. After checking out everything that needs to be restocked, we get started and pulling all the required products from the shelves to then be packaged up ready to get dropped off in the machines. The first product that we'll prep is Korean EV Heroes. Now, like a lot of packs in our vending machines, we don't only offer one pack per slot. We often do deals where if you buy more than one pack, you'll get a little bit of a discount. So for our Korean EV Heroes, we need to package up some of these in groups of three. And all it requires is that we package three packs together in one team bag. And now that we've done one, we get to do 20 more. Now, this is a very labor-intensive task, but it is pretty boring. So luckily, today we're getting to catch up on some Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 while we're prepping our vending machine. Which, on the download, this show actually goes so insanely hard. Next up, we'll grab our Unlisted Leaf Mystery Booster Packs. These are fantastic as Unlisted Leaf's team pre-packages these and sends them over to us. So really, for us restocking them, all it takes is for us to just grab them and go. And it's also a nice bonus that these packs are only available in our vending machines here in Australia. Now we have our Poke Lotto Mystery Graded Card Boxes. So for this example box, this is going to be our 1 in 25 chase box that features the Pikachu World Championships 2023 promo. With a value of $400 in a PSA 10, we're also chucking in the Roseanne's Backup Full Art and a couple of extra booster packs. For this one, we have 1 Crown Zenith and 1 Brilliant Stars. We also make sure we hide all of our grades for every slab in our boxes, so we put the little reveal grade tab on the top. Our last step is to put together the cardboard box and then also chuck some tamper-proof stamps on there so we know that people aren't resealing our boxes. When we're making the next 24 boxes, we do have to make sure that the value of all of those equals the price that goes towards our one chase box. So it does take a while for me to calculate the totals that go into each of the other boxes. I did want to time lapse building the other 24 boxes. However, I was recording on full HD instead of my hyperlapse setting, so it filled up my SD card in about 5 minutes. But worse things have happened. Let's move on now to our Japanese packs. In our vending machine, I try and dedicate one row entirely to foreign language booster packs. And we have a whole heap of different sets, which means we have a lot of freedom over which packs we actually want to put in our vending machine. At the moment, Ruler of the Black Flame seems to be selling really well, and I'd probably say it's because there is a big Charizard right on the front of the packaging. With Japanese Pokemon cards being my personal favorite, it's a nice little flair that I get to put inside of my vending machines. Now, currently we don't have any foreign language booster packs in other states, and that's something that's really cool and exciting exclusive to our vending machine down here in Tasmania. At some point, I do want to try and put some full boost boxes of either Japanese or Korean packs inside of the vending machine. But for now, we do still have the three times pack bundles, which I think is still pretty decent value. 30 card bulk bundles. Now these things actually just fly off the shelves. These are mostly just directed towards kids as they're priced at $5 per pack. They contain one ultra rare card on the front and 30 bulk cards. Now, whilst being $2 cheaper than a booster pack, which means they on average would give you a better return of value, there's going to be some hidden gems that end up in there as most of the time I just grab a handful of bulk. There is just nothing special to these at all. However, they're just like a great little gift that people can pick up as they're walking past. 
The only downside to these is they are pretty tedious to put together. It involves just making sure there's no doubles in any of the stacks, as well as making sure that you're getting exactly, or if not, a little bit over 30 cards. Most of the time, I'll make my stacks up to around about 35 cards, just so it gives me a little bit of room on the top and the bottom if some end up being a little bit smaller than others. Because if somebody gets a couple of extra common cards, it's really not the end of the world. But at the moment, we're going through about 42 bulk bundle sales every fortnight which is just over $100 a week of relatively inexpensive bulk, which is actually insane. To finish up, we're going to be grabbing some 151 packs as these have been going absolutely insane. It is definitely the best set of last year. And as per usual, we need to do a restock as well on our Evolving Skies because everybody loves Evolving Skies and they seem to just disappear the moment we chuck them in the machines. After grabbing a couple of little extra things, we'll close up the box and let's make our way to the vending machine. Now, both of my vending machines are located in the general Hobart area. It's not too far for me to travel for restocks. This vending machine in particular is the furthest one from me, around about a 45 minute return trip. Now, usually I like to rock up to the vending machine when this part of the shopping center is closed, just to minimize the risk of me having anyone pass me while I'm restocking the vending machine. I used to do my restocks early in the morning, but I had a few too many close calls with some loose units rocking up. However, recently, Recently, they did change their closing hours and I had no idea. So we did rock up while there were people still walking in and out of the center. I do really like filling up when there's people about because sometimes people will come up to me and ask me questions or we'll just have a general chat about Pokemon. And with myself and my stock being pretty vulnerable, it's just a little bit easier for me to restock after everything's closed. But restocking the vending machine itself, it's pretty easy. Usually when I'm restocking, I'll start from the bottom and move up to the top as will be the inverse way of what I packed everything into the box. If I'm changing out any of the coils or if I've added different shaped products, product lines to the vending machines. I will do some test vends just to make sure that everything's coming out of the vending machine smoothly. And as I'm restocking, I just update all my stock on the MoMA app so that once I'm finished, I can sync all the stock levels so it updates with every single purchase. And before we go, we give the vending machine a little bit of a clean. Usually the bottom half of the glass has a lot of little fingerprints on it. After that, we lock the machine up and off we go until we return again in the next couple of weeks. After a much needed shower, oh my God, I'm feeling so much better. So there you go. That was pretty much a day in the life of somebody that runs a Pokemon card vending machine. There might be some like occasional issues that come up that I have to actually go to the machines to troubleshoot something. After them being running for so long, those are now pretty few and far between. So if you guys have any vending machine or Pokemon card questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, I do want to say a big thanks to anybody that has purchased anything from my vending machines, as I really appreciate the support. The two machines haven't even been running for a year yet and we've already done over seven and a half thousand sales which is insane and we're hoping to expand this year into different parts of Tasmania as well. And if you don't live in Tasmania, if you do want to head over and check out the website, that would be really appreciated as we do have a wide range of different other things that aren't all just in our vending machines. But overall, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.